Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. I apologize for my rapid departure last time, but uh, it's not all that often that I get a phone call in the evening, and I generally try and take them when I do. But we return to Igor here, our halfling assassin. I like that it's Igor the Cutter. It reminds me of um, the Terry Pratchett books where the Igors are basically the only competent doctors. Anyway, uh, what were we doing? We were... yes, that's right. I was about to say I'm going to go up this way and try and loop around and stab him so that uh, I don't have to worry about fighting two of them at once. Because what I'm afraid will happen is I'll either, you know, get to he somewhere in here and the goblin will wake up, or worse, the snake will wake up, and then when I'm trying to retreat, the goblin will step in front of the snake, so I'm not really able to use the blowgun on the snake, and yeah, uh, I would rather just risk the goblin alone, yeah, waking up and coming after us. Though that snake is also... Okay, well, time to just try this then. Um, let's get them both and keep on running. Snakes are faster than you. You can't... Um, a, a normal speed character cannot truly run away from them, unless they are hasted or some such. I think Spriggans can successfully run away from snakes, maybe centaurs. I think snakes are 0.7, so they might be the same speed as a centaur. I feel like this is going reasonably well so far. I The extra experience gain is really prevalent right now. We're level 5 on dungeon level 2. That's a big deal. Um, now, I, I don't know for certain, now that I think about it, uh, back in the old olden times, in the older versions, uh, it used to be that you, ha you the experience points that you gained from killing things were increased in one category, which was your level, and then they were added to whatever skills you used. Uh, to, to obtain those experience points. And that was a, a just really rough system to work with. Um, much more grindy. So they switched it to this, where you get to assign where the experience goes. And I think it's still a one-for-one -one basis. The, the reason why I'm, I'm sort of rambling on about this is because I'm not sure if the uh, increased experience gain for halflings and kobolds and the other plus-one races is only applied to the character level, or if it's also applied to experience that is gained in, in your skills. Uh, because if, if if that's the case, if it's a sort of an additional underlying aptitude, basically, that's really neat. That, however, I, I, I don't think that's exactly how it works. I don't know. I'm not sure. Either way, we are stronger than we would be otherwise. We have more health, we have more uh, base stat points that we have gotten to allocate. I'm not sure if halflings... Uh, let me see. Halflings may get uh, a point of dexterity every some odd levels, no matter what. I'm not sure if it's split between dexterity and intelligence or not. Uh, yeah, plus one dexterity every fifth level. Okay. 10% lower hit points. We do get magic resistance per level. That's nice. Uh, and I think we also... Yeah. We have a decent chance... A two-thirds chance, two out of three chance to resist any mutations that we may acquire. And that's really cool. Saves uh, saves on potions of cure mutation, is less of a hassle, lets you kind of pick
pick and choose your mutations better because it basically if you drink a potion of mutation um hmm. <laughs> yeah this is a good spell book but i don't think we're all that interested i'll carry it with us just in case we get an offer we can't refuse some crazy artifact early on or some such uh Oh, right, yes. If you drink a potion of mutation, normally it applies three mutative effects uh, to you, and I want to say it's normally just a 50-50 chance whether they're good or bad. I have, in my experience, uh, at least in my biased brain, feel like it's a two-bad-one-good ratio most of the time. Uh, whether that's true or not, I have no clue, but I, I think nominally at least it's a 50-50 split. Oh, these snakes. This it's given us some problems. That was a lot of needles that we had to shoot at it. I hope it was worth it. I uh, Then again, maybe we're high enough level now that I really didn't need to. Oh, we're still at 17 needles altogether. Later, they'll be more supplemented than primary. Right now, they just do so much more damage than our dagger that uh, we might as well use them for the biggies. Okay. I don't think that this video is going to be too terribly long. Uh, it is nearing my bedtime, and... Well, I mostly just wanted to wrap up a little bit from the last video, which I feel like ended fairly abruptly. Oh, yes, so I, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, so the, the the neat thing about halflings is that we can drink a potion of mutation, and we have a reasonable chance of only getting one mutation, which means we can, uh, you know, we can, if we find a reasonable batch of potions of cure mutation, we can play mutation roulette a lot more easily. Poison is a great way to deal with um, polearm wielders that might otherwise pose a problem. Uh, do I want to switch up my skills? I don't think I do. I think this is still fine. I feel like short blades are a, a good focus for us in general. Um, you can go several routes with them. Ooh, this could be interesting. Plus three leather armor. I like it. Fairly stealthy versus fairly stealthy. Okay, I don't know that there actually is a penalty for leather armor. Uh, there is for spell casting, but not for. Oh, and I guess for melee, there is a slight penalty. It's more prominent with uh, unarmed combat than it is with weapons, so I think we'll be fine. Yeah. That, plus three is really nice. Yeah, we have armor class of seven and an evasion of twelve. That's pretty pretty good for now. For dungeon level three, yeah. Cool. Um, ooh. It does kind of make me want to turn on dodging, though. This seems fine. I feel like our needles are just really pulling their weight, and so I, I'm not too concerned about uh, putting everything into damage right now. Particularly since stealth has so much return for us, the, the the utility per point of stealth is is higher, I think, for this kind of character than any other, except possibly a um, an enchanter. Stealth is pretty good for enchanters, uh, but but even then, you can be a really unstealthy enchanter and still get work done. I mean, you just 
ensorcelled hibernation, whatever is standing next to you, and then stab it in its sleeping face, and rinse and repeat. Uh, <laughs> until you get a resist, and then you run away. Oh, hi, guys. Uh, I feel like I can fight them. We're level 5. I don't know how I feel about being netted, however. Yeah, as long as we get some poison going. Yeah, and that was a good chunk of experience. Yep, keep putting it into dexterity. Uh, one reason why I'm interested in trying this build is that many of my previous builds have been strength focused. Uh, I I don't know. I'm some some somewhat fonder of uh, maces than I am of uh, the more dexterity centric weapons, like short blades and whatnot. Uh, and and I'm excited because dexterity gets a, a more utility per point than strength. And by that I mean that each point that is put into a dex into dexterity for any character except one who is purely strength focused grants a larger benefit. All other things being equal, um, especially now. I mean, strength is, is really bad now that you don't even need it to carry things. I, I know that sounds silly, but uh, that was actually a big part of why uh, the the mace-slash-axe-wielding two-hand characters that just barrel through things, or shield-bearers, uh, like a morning star, an evening star, were kind of fun because you didn't have to worry about inventory management, and now all characters have that boon. So, I don't know, that's kind of a point in favor of... Well... Yeah, again, a point in favor of removing the item weight, but at the same time, it makes strength even worse, and that makes strength-based characters less fun, so I don't know. A book emporium. Grant Grimoire is kind of fun, actually. I like uh, I like my experience with it uh, on one of my previous runs. Spatial translocations might be interesting, but I just really don't want to cast spells. I... Don't want to deal with that this run. That's kind of another bookstore. Jeez. The one time that I don't play a spellcaster. Oh, although... A Tome of Destruction is very interesting. It's sort of a high-risk, high-reward evocable. We'll keep that in mind in case we go evocations. Uh, it'll be a little while before we determine if that's the case. It's going to depend a lot on our god choice. This is scary. Hmm. If I try to fight this, I will lose. It's so tempting because they're all asleep, but the fact that this one is awake means that as soon as I step there, at best, this guy stays asleep. Well, at best, all of them stay asleep, but... I only get to stab this guy. Uh, yeah, there's no way that I'm going to be able to reach the priest alive and kill him, so we're going to retreat. Just regular orcs by themselves are worthless. They don't do anything. Oh, somewhere there was a ruined dagger, I believe. Um, pardon me, I'm going to <coughs> sneeze. Ah, my apologies. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to pause the game here. I uh, I think I need to take some allergy medicine, and um, maybe I'll resume it. But that that that's a bit of a pickle up there, and I feel like I'm I'm a little distracted, and I kind of don't want to die. Uh, so you know, I'm I like Igor so far. I'm having fun. I will check out this dagger, though. Ooh, that makes me excited for next time, dear viewers. Uh, venom, poison on our dagger is, is 
one of the best things that we possibly could have found. That means that we don't even have to worry about this short sword because our rapid attacks with the dagger are going to be so potent that we don't need the additional base damage. We just don't have to worry about it. That's really good. Uh, so that means that... Um, Wow, soon we only need to get to skill level 10 to make that reach its cap. Let's turn off stealth for a little while. It's not getting as big of a benefit anyway, since it's only a plus one. Stealth early on in the early levels and early on in the game is a little bit... Um, I don't know. It's somewhat unreliable. And by somewhat, I mean really unreliable. Unless you follow Dithmenos, or have some other form of stealth boost. Or, you know, some races are much, much better at it. Uh... Hmm. My my hesitance is based on whether or not I want to keep training dodging. I don't think it's that crucial to reach minimum delay with my dagger just quite yet. By the layer, I really need it, but that won't be for another few dungeon levels anyway. I I think I'll, I'll explore a little bit more. My, my nose has stopped itching, so I think I think I will be able to continue without needing to take a Benadryl or something. Huh. Let me abuse the light of sight. This is the first time in a while, also, that I haven't. Uh, gone for a Chabritos run. Oh, this ogre skeleton is going to be really dangerous. It is immune to all of our things. The, the one thing I didn't think about when I dropped that short sword actually would have been fairly useful here. Hmm. Well, oh, I guess we could throw rocks at it. and then run away. Uh, since we do have some points in throwing, let's go upstairs. Yeah, um, Undead can't follow you upstairs, so that's, uh, that situation was somewhat less dangerous than perhaps it could have been. Yeah, and then we just walk away. Yeah, and our short blades is still increasing rapidly enough that I don't think we have to turn off dodge. Ooh. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, Short Blades is doing well. And our evasion is still fine. Uh, Okawaru. Not sure I'm feeling it on this character, to be honest. Um, hmm. Though, I don't know if he gives you needles or not. If he gives you needles... Hmm. Then that could be really good. Ammo in general is going to be useful to us. Heroism is good. Because for some odd reason it boosts stealth as well. You get really heroic and uh, sneak quite easily. <laughs> so, eh, go figure. Um... He is also really good if you switch to him very early on. His wrath isn't awful. I, okay, so the our, our alternatives off the top of my head. Um, Dithmenos is quite good for an assassin. Um, lets you do some really interesting things with line of sight. And that's kind of fun. Um, line of Sight is, is a very intricate part of this game, one that I haven't entirely mastered yet, just because it 
it literally affects your every move. And so um, you can spend just inordinate amounts of time thinking about how to approach things. Uh, I mean, if, if you want to be truly safe, you never even auto-explore. You just take one tile at a time. Um, but, you know, so manipulating that, making it... Uh, make, yeah. Huh. It can be really good. Um, since we're not casting spells, that gives us a, a movement altering effect as well. You can shadow step uh, to sleeping things. Dismanos just seems really attractive for a non-spellcasting assassin. Huh. Tell you what, I'll explore the rest of the level. Ooh, a cutlass is good. I'm pretty sure... Oop, that's not the right button. That was dangerous. Uh... Huh. Let me look up a cutlass. I I feel like I'm not. I I well, it's true. I'm not as familiar with short blades as many others. Um, oh, okay. It's the short blade with the highest base damage. Okay. Interesting. And it has a lower than normal base delay of 0.5. Yeah, whereas other weapons with a 1.2 base attack delay would have a 0.6 minimum delay. So we'd have to have our skill a little bit higher. We'd have to have it at 14 for it to be uh, for it to be at minimum delay. But that's still cool. I will almost certainly pick that up. It was kind of risky just sort of running over there, but again, I feel like we're fairly strong compared to what we're fighting right now. Dodging is level two. That's nice. Got a whole extra point in our evasion. Kind of scary. Let's... Uh, yeah, that was probably dangerous. I don't know. Skeletons are just so much weaker than their living counterparts, particularly since they don't carry weapons. Until you, you know, run into skeletal warriors and things. But ogre skeletons do not carry weapons. And that's one of the things that makes living ogres so scary is that their clubs can do 50 damage or something. I might exaggerate slightly, but it's pretty high. Pretty high. Gadget shop. Ooh, a wand of teleportation is great. Uh, it is not within our budget at the moment, but we can look forward to it. Deck of summonings wouldn't be terrible. Crystal ball of energy is useless to us. It's an excellent, uh, excellent way to get a bunch of mana if you have the patience to train up invocations on a caster. Which I generally don't. Okay. Now let's try... No. Ugh. So bad. Really didn't want to do that. Ah, okay. We survived. But that was, that was just the incorrect choice. I thought that we had maybe increased our stealth enough to at least stab the wizard. I feel like if we could have stabbed the wizard in that situation, because of our dagger of venom now, we would have we would have been just fine. But uh, unfortunately that was not to be Okay, yeah. Here's and here's where you can see the, the venom just really doing work. You you stab you well slash at a monster until it's poisoned a couple of times and then just switch to the next one. Um, axes of venom are particularly brutal because they can just poison everything around you. I think, not for sure, but I believe. 
Um, let's... Wand of Random Effects. Okay. Not the best. In fact, I would consider it to be perhaps the worst. Antique Armor Emporium. Ooh, gloves. That we can afford. I'll pick those up over a wand of teleportation. We don't need a wand of teleportation any more than we need these gloves yet. Because I'm greedy. Really, I should have bought the wand. Uh, because that provides us with a an escape mechanism that we don't really have yet. But I really want to wear a pair of artifact gloves. Oh, no, they're cursed. Oh, well. I think I can live with that. They're cursed, but they're plus one gloves that give us double resist fire, resist cold, and resist negative energy at the low, low price of three dexterity. I'm absolutely sure that that's worth it. A, a good way of thinking about it is um, if you had a ring that gave you two pips of resist fire, a pip of resist cold, and a pip of resist negative energy, and another ring that gave you plus three dexterity, which one would you rather wear? <laughs> Uh, to be fair, uh, resistances are not as crucial this early in the game. There are many fewer elemental and negative energy effects, unholy effects, uh, because they're very strong. That being said, the few that you do run into can just straight up kill you. So, you know, that's a, a benefit for us. Um, let's put on this ring, too. A ring of ice. Um, I forget how you take off jewelry. It's one of those that isn't quite as intuitive. Remove R, that's right, yeah. So it is intuitive, it's just not the same key. Hugo's ghost, oh, well, I apologize for the spoilers, dear viewers, uh, if you have not yet seen Hugo's ill-fated attempt at the dungeon. Hugo was a, a centaur hunter, my precursor to this character. Ooh. Let's try this. Appears confused. Jackpot. All right. Wand of random effects came through. Gave us our stabbing bonus. Not as nice as if they're asleep, but it's still better than nothing. And, yeah, we made short work of him. Short Blades is up to eight. That's quite good. I think at nine, I'll turn on stealth again. Just using the tab key there to attack that bat. Ooh, a Book of Enchantments. Does that contain Ensorcelled Hibernation? Uh, it does not. No, it's the high-level one. I see. It does contain Deflect Missiles and Haste. Gosh, those spells are so good. I think I may have to make an exception to my don't really want to cast spells rule. At some point, I will want Deflect Missiles, and I will want Haste. There's no question. Charms aren't necessarily as ball-breaking. What is Excruciating Wounds? Oh, it, pain brand. Eh, that's not great. By the time you're able to cast it, a lot of things resist. I don't know. It can be good, but eh, not on this character. I'm really glad that we beat Hugo. That was pretty cool. All right, I I think that. Um, Okawaru is going to be the choice. So the upsides are that we get a bunch of equipment. We're going to be decked out pretty quickly in gear. And we'll get a lot of ammo. It'll make the lair trivial. So we can just poison everything and run away. Um, 
gives us some additional survivability. Finesse is particularly good with extremely fast weapons already, so if we get a dagger of fire or ice or electricity, although electric electrocution, I think, has been somewhat nerfed in 0.15. I believe reading that somewhere. It's, it's just a lower base damage effect, a lower static effect. <laughs> um... But yeah, finesse is good. Though, you know, now that I think about it, that's only if we have a branded weapon. Finesse is much, much better with large, large weapons. Just because it's it's a... Uh, I'm not sure what percent speed up it is, but it's a percent reduction in delay. And weapons with a long delay, high base damage benefit much more from... Because while, you know, the math may make them equal in theory, in fact it's better to have a faster bashy weapon because of reasons. Um, sorry, I'm still, I'm still trying to think if I want to worship a Kobaru or not. I think perhaps what I will do is I will go ahead and end the video here. I'll, I'll leave you in suspense, dear viewers, as to whether or not I will kneel at the altar of the God of War. Uh, and I'll think about it between this time and next time, and uh, that's how we'll begin the next video. So, as always, thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you next time.